You know, I learned something from yesterday's video, and that's that people tend to fall in two camps in regards to A. Either she's a terrible Archon who through an action allowed the suffering of her people and thus a civil war, or a misunderstood one who in a misguided and scared attempt to shelter her people following the death of not only her sister, but an entire nation, offered to tread the path of eternity for them. And while we can talk about A at full another day, that really got me thinking. What do people think about the Cryo Archon? Hoyo did something interesting with the end of the Fontaine quest. They managed to make people rally against the Heavenly Principles and in turn painted the Cryo Archon's actions in a better light. But answer me this. Let's say the Cryo Archon's rebellion somehow works. Uh, what then? Is the world really a better place with people like Dottore and Sandrone running around in it, two certified monsters? Is enabling the Fatui's madness really worth tearing down the firmament? Actually, no. Enabling and madness are not the correct words here. She is directly responsible for the Fatui's actions, and they cannot be described as madness, but rather inexcusable, deplorable, and heinous. Yeah, 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 I busted out the big words this time. The Cryo Archon and the Fatui have become an entity far worse than the organization they are attempting to overthrow, and thus managed to make A look like Mother Teresa as a result. I mean, let's look at just some of the crimes associated with the Fatui. Oh! Wait a second! These aren't crimes committed by the Fatui as a whole, but rather just one man within the Fatui! <laughs> The Cryo Archon has become so desperate in her attempt to overthrow the Divine that she's welcomed with open arms someone like the Doctor and sanctioned his little experiments. You can hardly even call them that. I mean, Dottori has the monsters of Unit 731 just pumping their fists in the air shouting, Yeah! This is progress! I mean, I want you to ask yourself, what would Kala think? Hmm? How would she feel knowing her suffering was just a means to an end to research delusions? Would it comfort her? The PTSD she experiences during human interactions now serve the purpose of overthrowing the heavenly principles? No! Don't touch me! Sad, isn't it? The Cryo Archon did this. She may not have been the one holding the syringe and scalpel, but she bears responsibility nonetheless. Ask yourself, is this okay? The countless dead kids who, who don't even get the joy of, of experiencing PTSD? I, that, I, I don't, I did not, that sounded really weird. <laughs> <laughs> However, in her pursuit of war, she has not only caused endless suffering beyond her borders, but has also lost the love of her constituents. She is a god with no love left for her people, nor do they have any left for her. Her followers hope only to be on her side when the day of her rebellion against the divine comes at last. I mean, this is a quote by Dainsliff, which is interesting because it highlights two important things. One, she no longer loves her people, and two, her people no longer love her. All that remain in Snezhnaya are followers waiting for the overthrowing. But how did it come to this, and what do we know about the Cryo Archon? Well, for starters, the Saritza is not the original Cryo Archon. At some point, the original Cryo Archon died or ceased to exist or something like that. And then later, this one came into being. Unlike Fosalor and Kusanali, we know she was Cryo Archon before the Cataclysm based on Venti once knowing her. The Seven don't always get along well, but still. I never thought that she would plot to steal another Archon's Gnosis. Uh, how should I put this? 500 years ago, I knew her well. But I can't say the same is true now. You see... A certain catastrophe happened 500 years ago, and after that, she cut off all ties with me. Her ideal is presumably that of love, given how often it's brought up around her, but this may have somehow changed when Zhang Li was talking about the Archons, he had this to say about the Cryo Archon. Justice flows across the surface of the waters. War rages like a flame, as does that which the Cryo Archon once. <sighs> Yes, these details are masterfully done. So it sounds like her ideal actually might have changed and is no longer love? The Saritza appears to have had a radical shift in her personality around the time of the Cataclysm. Both of these tie into Child's description of her which states, quote, Her Royal Highness the Saritza is actually a gentle soul. Too gentle, in fact, and that's why she had to harden herself. Likewise, she declared war against the whole world only because she dreams of peace. 
What so deeply affected her is not known, nor why it seemed to have hit her the hardest and leave all the other Archons seemingly unaffected. All that we really know is that she hardened herself and is now a completely different person following the destruction of Conria. One personal question I have regarding her is, if it was the events of the Cataclysm that changed her dearly, then why did she wait 500 years to finally kickstart the rebellion by taking the Gnosis? I mean, I get plot and all that, but it seems really sus she did this around the time the Traveler awoke. In any case, something that makes the Cryo Archon unique, however, is actually the manner in which she's attempting to take down Celestia. She's certainly not the first person to try and overthrow the Heavenly Principles, but she's seemingly the first one to not try and use forbidden knowledge to do so. Nibelung came along, forbidden nope. knowledge. King Deserat came along, forbidden nope. knowledge. A Pep came along, forbidden nope. knowledge. Conria came along, forbidden nope. knowledge. Obviously, they all failed. <laughs> so it seems like she's trying to take a different approach, one that involved capturing all the Gnosis for some purpose. She knows the truth behind the Gnosis to an extent that even the God of Wisdom didn't know, with Nahida wondering, quote, the Gnosis to her was but a core that gathers a mass of elemental power at her discretion, but if there was nothing more to a Gnosis, why was a god so eager to gather all of them together? How she came to learn the truth of the Gnosis are not known, but it may have been Piero given the people of Conria knew a lot about the truths of the world relating to the Heavenly Principles, most importantly, that they don't originate from Tibet. Piero is also probably the one who stopped the use of forbidden knowledge given he was one of the few who urged King Ermin to stop using it back at Conria. The Saritza has complete control over every facet of being in Sejnaya at a level we have yet to see another Archon have. Given a part of an Archon's power comes from directly ruling over their people, the Cryo Archon must be especially powerful in this regard, seeing as her rule is absolute. It was with Piero she would establish the military branch of Snezhnaya, also known as the Fatui. She would give many members of the Fatui power boosts in the form of delusions. How delusions are made aren't really known, but it's worth noting if any of it comes from her personal power, this is a grave sin in the eyes of Celestia. King Remus did the exact same thing with his Hormos in Rumeria, and we all saw how that ended. Actually, even if it isn't just her power, delusions are thought to come from dead gods' remains, and the sin here either way is granting humans divine power, something that only Celestia can do. However, this small act obviously pales in what will soon be her gravest sin, which is an attempted rebellion at the divine. While Child claims she wants world peace, do the ends really justify the means here? Is the Saritza completely incapable of reigning in the parts of the Vitui that serve no purpose, yet continue to exist? The Celestia's greatest sin was like what, turning one nation into Hilly Gerald's? <laughs> As a slow week, that's what that is. The Torre experiments on children specifically. He chooses them out specifically. But Celestia, man, woman, race, child, age, it don't matter. Everyone gets the punishment the same. The Torre, on the other hand, specifically seeks the weak, the young, and the innocent. And the Cryo Archon is either somehow completely unaware of this, which I find so impossible, but I might as well bring up, simply doesn't care, or even worse, is commanding this nigga to do this. So you're telling me she saw something in Conria that was somehow worse than Sandrone having a dude's tongue ripped out? Man, shut the fuck up. For now, anyway, this is pretty much all we know about the Cryo Archon. She wants to upend the world order, and that's it? So we don't really know the part two to her plan, other than she really wants the Heavenly Principles gone. But what she plans to put in place or do with people like Dottori afterwards is a complete mystery. 